So for problem number, uh, number 11 in section 1.2.1, .1, we're given a physics problem where we have a particle traveling along the x-axis um, and whose position is given by the function 1 over t squared, where t is, measured, is time measured in seconds and the position measured in feet. And we want to find the instantaneous velocity at just any given time t. And the way that we're going to do this is we're going to use the um, average rate of change using intervals, you know, x plus h, and we're going to think of h getting closer and closer to zero. So the interval that we're taking the average rate of change over becomes smaller and smaller. Now, for not, it's not true for all functions that you can just stick in h and end up with a well-defined quantity. Often you end up with something uh, where you're dividing by zero or you end up with something undefined like zero over zero. However, for this problem, it will work just to start out with the interval x plus h and just work it out and plug in h. So first off, we start out by writing the average rate of change. Now keep in mind that this is on the interval x, x plus h. So we have um, x. I apologize, the function is actually x as a function of t, so we're going to look, be looking at the interval t, t plus h. over h. Now just stick in t plus h into our function. We end up with 1 over t plus h quantity squared minus 1 over t squared all over h. Now the next step is let's just find a common denominator here. So let's take t squared uh, minus t plus h squared over t squared times t plus h squared, where on each term here I just multiplied by the term that it didn't have in the common denominator, which is just the product of the two denominators. And all of that is over h. Now, probably the easiest way to write this is just to write it as 1 over h times same quantity that's in the numerator here. Except I'm going to expand the numerator of the numerator, which then becomes minus t squared plus 2th plus h squared. Close the parentheses, and all that's over t squared times t plus h quantity squared. All right, so if we look a little bit closer here at the numerator, we can see that the t squared, we have a t squared term, subtract, and then we subtract another t squared term. So these two terms just cancel right out. So that then leaves us with, we have 1 over h times the quantity, see we have minus 2th plus, or excuse me, minus h squared all over t squared times t plus h squared. All right, now this looks a lot better because we have an h in every term, so we can just cancel those right out. So get rid of this h there and get rid of one of the h's there. So all this becomes minus 2t minus h all over t squared over t plus h squared. And then it's clear if we you know, start letting h become smaller and smaller, this term is going to go to 0. This term here is going to go to t squared times t, or t squared times t squared, or t to the fourth. So, write this vertical bar here with h equals 0, just meaning that we're substituting in 0 for h. And we get that minus 2t over 
t to the fourth, which equals minus 2 over t cubed. And this is our final answer for the instantaneous velocity at time t. Of course, we should keep track of our units here. And we were originally measuring in feet and seconds. So the average velocity is going to be minus 2 over t cubed feet per second. And that's the end of problem number 11.